Hi everybody, this is Harmony with Harmony Stitches and welcome to my channel. Um, here we talk about my crafting journey, which usually revolves around cross stitch. It has for the last couple of years, um, but I do knit and crochet as well. Crochet used to be my go-to craft, um, but then I started knitting a little bit here and there, and then I found cross stitch, and I think that's my favorite. I have become more um, a proficient, a more more proficient of a knitter. Um, so, and I like the fabric so much more, so that's kind of overtaking crochet too, but I think that's okay. Welcome to everyone that is visiting with me today. I appreciate um, you taking time out of your day to visit with me and to stop by my channel. If you're a subscriber and a return viewer, thank you so much for coming back each week. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and click that button and then click the bell and click and then click all notifications so that way you can be notified when I post a new video and you can hang out with me again. Um, this month has been full of March madness, uh, madness, and we're almost to the end. So we're going to talk about that and maybe talk about plans for April, which maybe there are no plans. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see by the time we get to that part of the conversation. So let's go ahead and get started. So on the final four, we had Christmas House versus Chalk Full Liberty by Hands on Design. And then we had Merry Christmas, a freebie by Teresa Colgate. And then Where There Are Bees by The Prairie Schooler. So um, this isn't, it's spoiler alert <laughs> because Christmas House, um, after Christmas House and Chalk for Liberty were stitched on for each of their two days, I did put up a poll in my Instagram stories and Christmas House won. Well, I was, so it went into the final two, final two started today and I had a finish on it. So it is a spoiler alert. I can't show you what I got done in the, in the final four, but I can say that this is now a finish. Now I did um, modify just a tad here on either side of the word Christmas was supposed to be like a little holly berry wreath or something. And my daughter and I decided that we liked it the way that it was, that it really did not need anything else. And that's just our opinion. If you like um, the designer's original, go ahead and stitch that. It's your piece and you can do whatever you want. So I liked it. My daughter liked it the way that it was. I got the back stitching done. I put the ornaments on the tree this morning and I finished the tie, the shingles on the roof and I forgot that there was chimneys. So I got those in too. This is stitched on 28 count black Monaco um, with the called for DMC. So I'm glad to be able to remove that whip from my whip wheel and give space to something else. So then of course, after um, the two days that the Christmas house was supposed to have, I moved on to Chalk Full Liberty. And on this, I'm using the called for DMC conversion that's listed on the chart. Kathy um, from Hands on Design always gives us a conversion in case we want to use that instead. I did put two days worth of work in this. I started with some of the outlining and then um, some more of the outlining and then started filling in more. So here we are. I did some outline up here and then some more outline over here. Um, I did some green in the leaves, filled in these flowers, and I was gonna head back up there, but my two days was done. I do believe that another two to four days would finish this piece off as well. Um, not much more to it. This, this whole side is finished, I believe. This side is finished. I believe this side um, is getting there. The flowers just need their centers. Oh no, they need a Smyrna cross in the, in the middle of the flower. Each flower has a white Smyrna cross on it, in it. Um, and then there's quite a few more flowers up here that need outlining and some leaves and stuff. But I really do believe that I can get this done in a probably more realistic, like three to four days. But that's not bad considering that I only had half of the jar and a couple of the flowers done when I started this at the beginning of the month or picked it up at the beginning of the month because this was a whip that I brought into the challenge. So that was matchup number one for um, the final four. 
Um, the next matchup started with Teresa Kogut's Merry Christmas. This is a freebie. I believe that you can find it on her website, maybe her Instagram, or if she has a Facebook, I'm not sure. I believe I found it on her website. This I'm stitching on 18 count Ada that I coffee tea dyed myself. And here we go. In the two day um, matchup, I was able to complete this. I put in the snowflakes and the snowman, the Christmas tree and the second deer. And I finished that great big letter C. So I am so happy that this is completed. That means two whips are taken off of my whip wheel. Um, Teresa, the designer, used Weeks Dye Works for this. The only Weeks that I had was the brown, that she, it's mocha, that she used for the deer. All the rest I pulled from my stash. This is, I don't know if you can see it, but the color here is actually a blue. It was supposed to be a white, but the white doesn't show up on this um, coffee tea dye fabric that I did. So I had to change plans. So I knew that I had this really light blue in January by um, the Prairie Schooler. So I just went into that project bag and I stole a couple strands and it only took maybe three or four. So I think that's okay. Um, and I finished that out too. So that so far it are five finishes that I have from March Madness, three starts and two whips. And I am happy with that progress. So because, um, Merry Christmas was a finish, then where are the bees automatically advanced to the final two? Well, technically, if I follow the bracket, I'm supposed to give another two days to this project um, where there are bees by the Prairie Schooler. I'm supposed to give it another two days. Um, <clears throat> I may tap out of the challenge, and this is why. I was working on this and I ran out of floss, the gray-green color that's the dominant color in the project, I ran out. So this is my progress so far. I've um, finished, oh no, I didn't finish. I have a couple of more flowers, like a little flower petals here. But besides that, that hexagon is finished. I have finished no, I didn't. Again, I ran out before, if you can see, it's missing one little tiny leg there on that B. Besides that couple of stitches, it's like six stitches, I'm done with that hexagon. So I did move up here. What I was trying to do was find a, wait until I had a scrap, but then I didn't have a scrap because it used up all of the rest I had to get this far. So then I'm like, well, I'll start on the petals of the flower. And I got that far before I fell asleep last night. And I don't, th I, I'm happy with the progress because before the March Madness started, I had this bottom part here and the border that went with it and this hexagon. Oops, am I off camera? This hexagon and all of this. That was all that I had done at the beginning of the month. So all these these two hexagons and these two bees and this hexagon I put in during March and I'm very happy with that progress. So I may just be done with this so that way I can move on to other projects. Um, maybe I will get started on Gathering Honey by Luminous Fiber Arts. It's that chart that I showed you last week that I got from um, my local needle workshop and they got it for me from Nashville Market. Um, I might be able to get that done by the end of the month because in April, we're gonna start something else. Um, so maybe I could just work on that for the next four days and see if I can get that done. Because I can make a little bit more progress on where there are bees, but without that main color to stitch the outlines and everything to give me points of reference to put the other pieces in, it would be pretty difficult for me to do some of the counting and I don't want to put a lot of work in it and then have to rip it back out. And I'm sure that you all understand that. So after I finished Christmas house this morning, I did pull out the little Halloween freebie piece by my Italian designer that I like so much. And I started working on the ghost there 
putting him in, in purple. Um, I figured that I, I could work on this one for the rest of the day and see if I could get this one done too because I know this would be number six um, for finishes for the month and that would be really exciting. There's really not a whole lot left to this one so I think I could do it. Um, this is stitched on the same 18 count Ada that I coffee tea dyed. Kind of pulling floss just from my stash to match up. It's only a, a, the three colors. Um, I can't remember. Fragrant cloves, falling leaves. I didn't bring the bag up here. So I can't remember what orange this is, but it is an over dyed cotton. And then the black is a week Zyworks coal. And then this is 209 or 210 or something DMC. So I think I'm going to stitch on this for the rest of the day, at least the afternoon until dinner time. I hope it's not dinner time yet because after dinner, I have to put in the rest of my stitches for the month on Lady of the Flag so I can make the Traveling the USA um, challenge. I think I only have 238 left, so that's not horrible. It's just I need to just sit down and do it. So I think I'm going to work on this until dinner. Um, I did do a couple of chores before I came up here to film, but uh, I have that mountain of laundry that I was supposed to put away last week and I never put it away. So <laughs> I really should at least give it five minutes. Do you really understand how much laundry you can put away in five minutes? If I gave it five minutes, I would probably have half of it put away and then I could do the other half tomorrow. It's just one of those things that it's kind of overwhelming to me to do for some reason, even though it only takes five minutes. Um, yeah, my brain just really doesn't like doing it. So anyway, work on this until dinner, after dinner, Lady of the Flag, see how much progress I can get. I know that I can get Lady of the Flag finished by the, uh, not finished, but the challenge stitches completed by the end of the month. So that way I too can join my fellow stitchers in Richmond, Virginia. If you don't know what I'm talking about, in the Michigan Cross Stitch Group, I created a challenge for this year where I put all of the state capitals and District of Columbia on a decision wheel. I spin the wheel every month, find out where we're going to go. And then participants will use a map like Google Maps, Apple Maps, MapQuest, whatever maps that they want to use, see how many miles it is from their home to that capital. And then you have to choose a piece and put in that many stitches <clears throat> in the month. So I am choosing Lady of the Flag as my focus piece for those challenges every single month. Last month, we traveled to Sacramento, California, and I had 2,300 stitches to do, and I did it. This month, it's Richmond, Virginia. I only have 719 stitches, and here we are four days away from the end of the month, and I have 238 left. So I don't know. Um, I think March Madness is getting in the way because I really wanted to finish these pieces. Um, but other than that, I really don't know what's wrong with me this month. I do like stitching on it. It's just I think March Madness kind of took the front uh, the front focus on my projects for the month. Okay, so I do have one purchase. It's not very exciting. It's a finishing piece. It's an 11 by 14 frame. This was at my, uh, we have a local store here in Michigan, Michigan, Indiana, Ohio, I believe. It's Meyer, And it was on clearance for $5.60. I had my eye on this last week and then they still had one. Actually, I had my eye on a smaller one and it was kind of tealy blue, and but it was smaller. And I didn't really know what I would put in it. But this one I thought may be big enough for... His name is Jesus or Amazing Grace, two of the finishes that I had last year. So I did purchase this. Um, the only thing is I don't know if it will be big enough because, well, I know it's big enough. It's just, is my fabric big enough to be able to lace on the back or even, I know some of you are going to cringe, hot glue it onto like a mat board or something so that way it can be framed. So I'm not sure if it will work, but if not, I will have a pretty decent frame for just $5. It will go, I have finishing items over there and it will just go in my stack and it will wait for another piece to go in it, which $5, it's fine. So, all right, so let's talk about plans for April. 
Um, of course, we are going to have the Traveling USA Challenge in the Michigan Cross Stitch Group. I have no idea. I did not cheat and spin yet, so I don't know where we're going. Um, but I will have those stitches to do. I'm planning on doing those again on Saturday and Sundays. So I will reserve my Saturdays and Sundays for stitching Lady of the Flag. Seeing if I can get that challenge. Now, if we happen to go to Juneau, Alaska, I think my plans will have to change because that's pretty far. Um, anywhere that's over a thousand stitches, we'll probably have to get some time in the evenings after dinner, but we will see what happens. Um, even Friday mornings are good too because I don't have to drop my daughter off at college that day on Fridays. Um, so we'll see. There's also Good Friday coming up that I believe we have the day off work. I'm still trying to figure out all this new, you know, at my new job. I've only been there for a month, so I'm still trying to figure things out and how they operate versus how the previous school district operated. So there's some opportunities in there for me to be able to get the stitches done, but if we're going to Juneau, Alaska, I might have a problem <laughs> because it's pretty far. Um, if we go to Lansing, I got it in the bag. I could probably do that in a day. <laughs> so I'm um, one sitting and I'll have it done. A couple strands of floss. Um, but besides Lady of the Flag and the Traveling the USA Challenge, I am going to focus on getting the crocheted blanket done. Um, this is for my friend from high school. Her, um, she got married recently and her and her husband want to foster to adopt. And they want the child to be able to come into their home and have these belongings. Because, um, you know, with, with fostering, it doesn't always work out. But she wants them to be able to come with, if they come with nothing, they then they if they leave, then they would leave with something. And I thought that that was a really, really great um, thing for her and her husband to do. So um, she asked if anyone could make blankets. I said, yes, I can make that blanket. She bought the yarn. I'm doing it as um, a gift. So I really, really want to get that done. Um, so starting Friday, April 1st, I will work on that when I'm at home. I am not taking it with me to the office because it's too big and too bulky because it's a blanket and it's chunky. If it were just a regular, like maybe knit or crochet blanket, it wouldn't be so bad, but it is, it is because it's chunky yarn, it's huge. Um, so I will work that in the mornings and then when I get home and then the when I go to work, I will spin the wheel for a whip to take with me or I will spin for a new start. I think I'm not going to put too much pressure on myself to do one or the other. I think when I wake up that morning, if there's something that I want to work on, maybe I'll just do that instead of the wheel just because I I want to focus more on the crocheted blanket than anything else this month. I want to get it done as quickly as possible, but also put the limitations on myself to not hurt my hands. Um, last time I mentioned hurting my hands, um, one of the viewers here that's been with me since the beginning, Peggy, um, mentioned some crochet hooks that she heard another um, YouTube podcast or talk about. I will talk about crochet hooks maybe in a bonus cut video because it's not like a two minute conversation, maybe five to 10, maybe even 15 minute conversation. But I will talk to you about that and why my hands hurt when I crochet. Um, but I think that's it. Not, not any real solid plans besides the blanket and the lady of the flag. I think my at work stitch, my travel to work stitch, my lunch break stitch, whatever you want to call it, is just going to be random and whatever I feel like. I'm so close to some of these projects being done too. I kind of feel like I should work on them, but also I've been working on them all month and I want to move on to something else. So I kind of seems selfish, but at the same time, these are my projects and they'll get done when they get done. And I shouldn't have feel any pressure from anybody, even myself to get them done. So I think that's all that I have to share. So I think, um, I will say my usual, I hope that you found something to inspire you to either work on something new, work on something that you haven't worked on in a while, or maybe even pick up a different craft. 
I hope that you get a lot of crafting time in in the next week and I will see you again on Sunday. Bye.